He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand, he leadeth me. He is faithful forever, I would be for by his hand, he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, Okay, good evening everyone. Good evening everyone. This is the seventh live stream out of 26. And our title for tonight is What Happened to Right and Wrong? It is about God's law. Uh, the reason I am reviewing the doctrines is because I read in Matthew 13, Jesus himself said that those who don't understand doctrines will be carried away by the enemy. Matthew 13, that is the reference. So I wanted to review the doctrines by myself and do it in live stream just in case somebody will benefit also. So let us start and pray. Our Father in heaven, be merciful to us, forgive us from our sins. Please possess us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we can understand your word, your prophecy. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> what happened to right and wrong? There was a man who was very angry. He, say, he came to the police headquarters. He was saying that somebody broke into his house and stole some things. So the police tried to look at all the criminals, that uh, they are common criminals, and so that this guy can see for himself, because he saw the burglar, can recognize the burglar. As they were looking on the pictures, the police realized that the man who was reporting the burglary was actually also one of the wanted criminals. <laughs> so then and there, he was complaining about a crime, but he himself was wanted. So he got arrested because there was an outstanding warrant. You know, our society <coughs> is... Uh, a mess there is crime and violence and organized crime it looks like we don't know what is right and wrong it looks like young people are everything that they care about is about themselves right so how about the values of the people what happened to the values it looks like they don't respect god they don't respect family and each other anymore it looks like the church is being broken apart because of the moral decline of the society <clears throat> so even the churches are confused about what is right and wrong what is happening some people some churches teach that there is no more right and wrong some people teach that there is no more ten commandments some churches say that no more commandments how come so because they say that there is no commandment then they reap the consequences hosea 8 7 they sow the wind and reap the whirlwind so they say there is no more ten commandments and then they wonder why there is shooting and stealing and uh, adultery etc so the question is what determines what is right and wrong are there opinions of people or there is a fixed definition and boundary between what is right and wrong or standard it says in proverbs 16 25 there is a way that seems right to a man 
but its end is the way of death. <clears throat> so, if the Bible says that our judgment as humans is not always reliable and is dangerous actually, so what? how can we know, since we are always mistaken, how can we know what is actually right? Especially in 2 Timothy 4.3, Paul predicted that in this time, <clears throat> for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They don't, people these days do not want to hear the truth. All they want to hear are opinions that agree with their idea because they have cherished sins. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables or stories that are not true or ideas that are not true so that is predicted that's why now many people are closing their eyes to the truth what happens when that happens? Nobody knows the truth. There is no law. There is no traffic law. Everybody just goes as they want and we end up in chaos. Like the traffic that has no rules. Just everybody just decides what is right and wrong. The chaos. So therefore, whatever society or system there is they need we need rules so <clears throat> a long time ago in exodus 20 verse 2 if we followed the ten commandments there would be no crime yeah if everybody just took the ten commandments seriously we don't have crime today so what are the ten commandments let's go and look at the law of god in Exodus 20, it starts the introduction in verse 2. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of a house of bondage. So first God wanted to introduce himself as the deliverer or from slavery because the Israelites were in Egypt as slaves for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years that means that god wants to save us god cares about us and about the israelites also and the law that god is giving is because he loves us okay you understand that <clears throat> that the love of god is proceeded then and then the rules come so that we can enjoy Peace and safety. Okay, so Ten Commandments are God's character of love that will lead us to relation with Him and also with other people. Okay, now let's look at the Ten Commandments. Number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is first commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image nor you shall bow down to them and worship them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for he will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. I am reciting the King James Version. This is another version, but the idea is the same, okay? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath, and the Lord your God. In it, you shall not do any work, you nor thy wife. No, it doesn't say your wife, but you means you're including the wife. Nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy manservant, nor thy ox, nor the stranger that is within thy gate. For the Lord made heaven and earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested and hallowed the Sabbath day. Okay, therefore, we also rest. See, uh, number... Okay. <clears throat> number six number five honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may belong upon the land which the lord thy god giveth thee 
Number six. Number six, yeah. Thou shalt not kill. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Number ten, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor his wife, nor his ox, nor his anything that is thy neighbor's. Manservant, male servant, oxian, donkey, or anything that is thy neighbor's. <clears throat> and since humans are forgetful, uh, like the fourth commandment says, remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. God wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger on two tablets of stones. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on my Mount Sinai, and when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of testimony. Oh, so testimony is also law. Tablets of stone written with the finger of God. Exodus 31 verse 18. So even if this is the first time God wrote the Ten Commandments or the law in written form, it already was there since everlasting. Okay? It, it's eternal because God's law is not right, uh, is not wrong. God's law doesn't need to be updated like your computer or whatever, the standard or the laws of the land. You don't need to add and you didn't need to remove because it is perfect. So it was there ever since. Why? Why was it there? Because it is an expression of God's character. And God's character is always there, which is unselfish love to give to others. In fact, even the angels in heaven had the law of God. Why? Because when Satan began to complain, he was accusing God of unfairness. In fact, he was saying that God's law is not correct and it needs to be changed. And so many angels believed him, one-third. Unfortunately, that is unfortunate. And he continued to deceive and is continued to deceiving now. That's why if somebody says there is no more Ten Commandments, that is not correct. Let us see on the following verses. So Satan and his angels... One third of God's angels were deceived by Satan and they were kicked out from heaven. And they are here in the earth deceiving other people also. Where is that written? In Revelation 12, 7 to 9. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But... They did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Revelation 12, 7 to 9. Satan who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. How about the angels uh, who remained loyal to God? Two-thirds of the angels. The Bible describes them as being obedient to His commandments. It says in Psalms 103, verse 20, Bless the Lord, you His angels, who excel in strength, who do His word. So there are more angels who obey God than angels who were deceived by Satan. Don't worry. Romans 4.15 where there is no law, there is no transgression. What does that mean? If there is no commandments, then we don't. there is no sin. Huh? So we cannot remove the commandments. Because then there, we don't, we will, there will be no more definition of sin. <clears throat> For example, another example is Abraham. This was long way before 
uh, the Ten Commandments were given in written form in Genesis 26 5 because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. What was Abraham obeying? Of course, the commandments of God. My commandments and my statutes and my laws. Yeah, they might not have written it, but God gave them the commandments in their mind. It was Moses who just wrote the history also, according to tradition, to what people think. Okay, let's go now. <clears throat> How about in Joseph's time? Joseph's sensitive conscience led him to meet temptation to Potiphar's wife by saying, There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has your master, our master, kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? How did Joseph know that it was sin? Huh? Because he knew that it was not against God's it was against God's commandments. How will Joseph know it is sin? Because they knew there is God's commandments. Okay. The children of Israel had been instructed to serve and obey God, but during hundreds of years of slavery. They forgot God's law and they were cooking on the Sabbath. After Exodus, just a few weeks before they reached Sinai, the Lord rebuked Moses because the Israelites were breaking his law by attempting to gather manna on the Sabbath. It says in Exodus 16, 28 and 30, And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws whose commandments god's commandments uh, take note my friends this is exodus 16. the ten commandments were given in exodus 20. so even before the ten commandments were written god required already the keeping of the sabbath they should not cook on the sabbath okay so we can see that the fourth commandment was already there. So the people rested on the seventh day. Just like uh, our governments here, the reason there are commandments or laws is because we want to create a safe, happy, harmonious society. And the rules that God gives are for the benefit of the whole creation. It's not supposed to be a burden. It's or a punishment because it existed before sin. Yeah? Before sin, it was there already. So it was the eternal standard of right and wrong. The reason it is like a burden to us is because of our sinful nature. It is based upon God's character of love. Okay, Love for God and love for humanity. And God's character doesn't change. In John 14, 15 says, If you love me keep my commandments so that is what jesus said that the measure of our love for jesus is how much we keep the commandments so if you really love jesus because of all the love he has given you keep his commandments that's what jesus himself says in Matthew 22, 37 to 40, it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And how do you love God? By keeping the commandments. There is no any other objective way to measure your love for God. Not by your emotions, not by your offering but by keeping the commandments oh by the way a co-offering is also a commandment in malachi 3 10. this is the first and great commandment love the lord thy god with all your heart mind soul and the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself this is the second commandment 
On these two commandments hung all the law and the prophets. If you notice the Ten Commandments, the first four are about God. The next six are about love to other fellow humans. If we love God with our mind, heart, and soul, we are to express it by keeping the first four commandments. And God will be number one in our lives. And we should also respect others. And we will want to spend time with Him on the Sabbath. If we love uh, our fellow brethren, our fellow men, we will respect our parents, we will respect life, we will respect morality, sexual morality, we will respect the property of others, and we will be honest in our dealings with relationships and relationships, and we will not covet what belongs to another. In Psalm 19.7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So it is the law of God that converts the soul, not uh, soothsaying. It is the law of God that converts the soul. Luke 16, 17 says, It is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle, which is a tiny part like the crossing of a T, of the law to fail. So heaven and earth can pass away, but God's law will never pass change so <clears throat> why would we want to change the law if the law is for keeping us happy it is a wall of protection from evil it is a shield for us not to experience pain and sorrow and guilt so God intended that this law was to ensure freedom and safety everywhere deuteronomy 5 29 says oh that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep all my commandments that amy it may be well with them and with their children forever just like as you see in this uh in this picture in this picture there are guardrails huh? so that the cars will not jump out the law and the commandments or the commandments or God's laws are like guardrails. If you remove them, then you can just fall out of into the ravine, onto the cliff. But because of our fallen world today, there is another function of God's law, which is to give us a knowledge of sin. <clears throat> Romans 10, uh, 3, 20 says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. If we did not know the law, then we do not know that we have sin. As Paul says, I would have not known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you should not covet. Romans 7.7 7. There is a story of a princess who his, her subjects told her that she was very beautiful, unsurpassed beauty. But someday, one day, somebody sold her a mirror. When she looked into the mirror, she was so shocked and horrified by her own appearance. And she smashed the mirror in pieces. She destroyed the mirror. <laughs> God's law is like a mirror. When we look into God's law, we are like the princess. We will see what is wrong with us. And it's not logical for us to destroy the mirror because it just shows us our condition. So that is what the God's law also does for us. It shows us our condition and while the law cannot fix the problem, it is at least tells us that we are guilty and we need to repent <clears throat> even if somebody can keep the law perfectly how about the sins in the past huh? how can we be forgiven and how can we be saved 
from the penalty of the broken law, which is death. That is a problem for us. So this was what was happening. There is a substitution. Since Adam and Eve sinned, there was a substitution lamb. That was a symbol that law uh, disobedience causes death. But because of God's grace, somebody else was dying. But the lamb cannot take all our sins. We would have run out of lambs. And it's not a human also. It's not equivalent. Jesus was, the represent, was what the lamb represented. And since sin happened, they offered lambs until when Jesus fulfilled this symbol. When he was crucified on the cross, then we know that it is the Son of God that takes away the sin of the world. The law cannot save us. It is Jesus Christ who kept the law perfectly but died in our place. That is salvation. Galatians 3.21 says, If there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But there is no law that can save us. The law just tells us that we are doomed because of our sins. Jesus Christ is the only solution. 1 John 3, 4 says that sin is the transgression of the law. If there is no law, then there is no sin. If there is no sin, we don't need grace. And if we don't need grace, we don't need Jesus Christ. We don't need a Savior. Okay? So it's not correct to think that there is no law. Because if there is no law, why are we supposed to preach? Why are there ter churches? There are churches, there is the gospel, there is forgiveness, there is grace, because there is sin. And there is sin because we disobeyed the law. And there, there is the law. Okay? If you remove the law and you try to think that there is the law doesn't exist, then we don't also need a savior. What is every, this everything religious for? <clears throat> but the cross does not do away with the Ten Commandments. Instead, it is an eternal memorial that the Ten Commandments will never be re removed, but that God was willing to pay to save our, from us from our guilt. Okay? If the Ten Commandments were, was removable, then what is the cross for? What is Jesus' salvation for? Okay. The reason there is the cross is because God cannot change His law. His law is His character. So, our sinful race needed somebody to substitute us. Otherwise, we will die, really. And thank God, it says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the most important thing that describes salvation. If you can find another option to have everlasting life, Maybe we will consider listening to it, but there is no other option. Anybody who claims to resurrect himself from the dead can maybe give us some life, but only Jesus Christ can do that. <clears throat> so, in Romans 6.23, it says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow! So, Ephesians 2.8 says also, that eternal life was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Since we are not saved by works, does that mean that we can freely 
disobey God's law? No. Romans 6, 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? So, it means that those of us who receive salvation, we want our hearts to be changed, to be like Jesus, to be in harmony with God's law, rather to continue living selfishly. So that is the sign with that of conversion. For example, there's a man in prison for killing a policeman and somebody pardons him. And he's set free. Does that mean he can kill as many policemen as he wants? Of course not. If he is pardoned, it means he has to obey the law. Okay? Pardon or grace doesn't mean that there is no more law. You still have to obey the law. The law is still there. Hebrews 8.10 says, <clears throat> I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. John 15.10 says, I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. It is easy to do something if you love somebody, right? If you just understand how much God loves you, the commandments, you will want to do his commandments. So just if you are having a hard time with the commandments, count your blessings. See how much God has done for you if you will not fall in love with God and want to keep his commandments and by keeping the commandments you abide in the love of Jesus Christ <clears throat> and you want to show your love to Jesus by keeping the commandments John 14 15 if you love me keep my commandments in the end of time in Revelation 14 12 there will be a group of people men and women who are keeping the commandments. Those are the people who will meet Jesus in the second coming. It says in Revelation 14, 12, Here is the patience of the saints. So the saints are patient. And here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So my friends, the saints who will be innocent when Jesus comes, Keep the commandments of God. Maybe they have done some sin before, but God can forgive them and they can keep the commandments. They will repent and they will want to be like Jesus Christ. With the power of the Holy Spirit, they want to be changed. They will be changed. Does keeping the commandments give you an easier life? No, not necessarily and probably not. Why? Because somebody is angry when you keep the commandments. Those who doesn't keep the commandments, they will angry, be angry with you. It's not popular because most of the world don't like to keep the commandments. There will be persecution. But don't worry. God is stronger. And those people who persecute you might change later. Even if the dragon is angry with you, don't worry. He will lose. God is going to win. <clears throat> Revelation 12, 17 says, and the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the faith and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So who are God's people? Those who keep the commandments of God. Wow. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Why do they keep God's law? Because they love him. <clears throat> Look at Jesus. He himself prioritized the will of the God instead of his own convenience. Matthew 26:39 says, "Oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will." He prioritized God's commandments over his convenience. So, that 
love of God from to us. If we just understand God's love for us, it awakens our love to Him. It says in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. That is God's will that we keep His commandments. By the way, the commandments are not a request. It is a commandment. God is God. So, my friends, this is the end of the presentation. Jesus has a question for us. Will you want to keep his commandments? Do you love God? Did you ever understand God? What God has done for you? Consider everything that God wants to do for you. And consider if you will keep his commandments. He created heaven and earth. He redeemed us. He forgave us from our sins. He wants to give us eternal life. What are keeping his commandments so difficult? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from all our sins because we did not know, because we were hard-headed, we were stupid and stubborn. Be merciful to us, Lord. Please give us wisdom and understanding, especially spiritually, to understand your love and blessing and grace and miracles and how you want to save us. So that we will understand that and we want to be like you and we want to keep your commandments and to obey you no matter what the world says, no matter how much persecution the disobeyers want to give us. Help us, give us wisdom and understanding to do your commandments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.